Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. This session is about a solution to critical section problem. The mechanism used here is sleep and wake up. These are the two different system calls used by the processors which are competing to enter into the critical section. One uh, important thing we have to ensure here is that this processors which are trying to enter into critical section, if you try to see the process with the previous methods, so we have seen different methods to solve the critical section problem using the flag variable, using the lock variable, using the turn variable, the Peterson solution, the disabling interrupts. So these were the different solutions for the critical section problem. Those solutions we categorize under uh, a name called as busy waiting, mutual exclusion with busy waiting. If these are the solutions with the mutual exclusion with busy waiting, the other type is the sleep and wake up. Means it is not going to what include the busy waiting type of uh, scene in the solution. Busy waiting scene is what if you uh, see in all the previous solutions whether it was using the turn or lock or Peterson solution or flag there suppose if p uh, flag variable if p0 is there in the critical section when p1 wants to make an attempt to critical p0 is already in the critical section okay so i'll write here cs critical section p0 is already inside the critical section when p0 is in the critical section and p1 wants to enter into critical section so in its 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 code is p1 is having what the solution it the code uh, cons consists of the while loop so it first test the while loop the while loop if the condition is true for this particular p1 then p1 cannot enter the while loop condition if it is true p1 cannot enter into critical section so this way we were ensuring that yes only one process will be in the critical section but what was p1 doing p1 was keep on executing the while loop again and again again and again to see that whether now whether any time the condition becomes false so making p1 to execute the while loop again and again is what is wasting the cpu time we should here save the CPU time. Our main aim should also be what to see that the CPU time is saved. So in order to ensure that no need for P1 to keep on uh, executing this while loop again and again, let us go for a solution which makes use of these concepts, sleep and wake up signals. Now how this sleep and wake up signals are used in the different processes that we will be seeing today. And the sleep and wake up uh, mechanism can be understood best with an ex best with an example called as producer consumer problem or this problem is also known as bounded buffer problem. So I will be explaining you this producer consumer problem and in because you can understand this concept sleep and wake up very well with the producer consumer. Let us see the different uh, the pseudo code for the producer and the consumer. Now normally see don't uh, start assuming things okay we are coming across the new terms like producer and consumer simply uh, to make things simpler whatever processes you were using here whether it is p1 p0 so this p1 you can take always as the producer okay and the other process p2 you can consider that as a consumer. Okay, we are just trying here, see all these previous solutions I have explained with uh, the names P1, P2, P3 or P0, P1 this way. But here I am using the words producer and consumer. These are also the processes only. But if we use exactly this words producer and consumer, it also what it also reflects the functionality of that process. What is this pr process producer doing and what is this process consumer doing? That we will be seeing here in the today's session. So now let us take this one. So hope it is clear to you all. Producer is one process, consumer is another process. Now why we are giving the name for that process as producer is it produces the items. Items are anything you can take. So let us take for anything in a sense you take. If suppose if you are uh, defining the items as integers, then we will always make use of what the integers as the items like sub simply the numbers 23, 67, 32. I'll just write some two digit numbers. You can make use of single digit, three digit, anything. Producer produces the items where it will place the items in the memory. So here what we are trying to say is that this memory has got certain locations. In each of these locations, the producer will be placing the items, okay. Since it is producing the items and placing the items, we will be calling it as what? Producer. The other process consumer, its job is what? To take these items, to pick the items from this memory. So, when it tries to pick the items from the memory and that pro consumer job is to 
simply pick the items or take the items from the con uh, memory and consume it so this consumer will take out the items like it will take 67 then it will take back this 22 so it will make this memory location empty so this is the job for the producer and the consumer now look at the pseudo code for the producer what you are doing is you are uh, uh, declaring this item of int, uh, int type and the variable name is what item here and this loop will be executed infinite number of times item equals to produce item the producer will produce the item now I, as i said before understanding the producer consumer code you better understand what how this sleep and wake up and how these processes are making use of the sleep and wake up suppose if this is the critical section okay if p1 is already inside the critical section p2 wants to enter into critical section in the previous solutions we have seen that p2 was busy waiting now we will avoid busy waiting so on p2 what it will do is before entering into the critical section it will what it will run that particular code that is its solution which it is defined so p2 will run the code for to enter into the critical section because always it has got what entry part critical section part and the exit part every process so p2 in the entry part when it runs that entry code it will get struck because p1 is already inside the critical section p2 when it is not able to enter into critical section when it sees that for the first time it runs its entry code when it sees that yes it cannot enter it simply makes what a system called called as sleep so it is making a sleep it is making a call okay system call sleep which will make p2 to enter into the sleep mode or we can say it is blocked now p2 is blocked once p2 is entering into the sleep mode then it is not wasting the cpu time now only this p1 when it complete its job in the critical section when it comes out it has to what it has to send a uh, wake up signal wake up signal to process p2 see look here p1 is sending the wake up signal to process p2 to come out from the sleep mode so p1 is indicating to p2 that i have now come out from the critical section you can enter into the uh, critical section so this way these two processes p1 and p2 p1 if it is in critical section p2 will make the sleep system call and goes and itself it will go into the sleep mode p1 after completing it will send a wake up signal to the p2 this is the concept of the sleep and wake up now this is what we have to check here producer will send a producer will uh, producer let us assume it is in critical section consumer when it wants to enter into critical section it is not able to enter so it will make a sleep uh, system call and it will enter into the sleep mode similarly when consumer is in the critical section producer will make a system call called as sleep and it will enter into the critical section but any point of time to wake it up the other process has to uh, make a system call like producer will send a wake up signal to consumer similarly consumer may send a wake up signal to producer so this is the concept now let us see line by line the code for the uh, two uh, processes producer and the consumer producer item equal to produce item so produce item and produce item is a function which is initialized to what to the variable called item now here look here one thing what you have noticed is we are using what a particular uh, variable n to indicate the number of slots in the buffer here it is assigned as 100 let me make it 5 so that it is easy for you to understand now let us take this n equal to 5 means i will have only 5 memory locations here in the buffer so initially we have assigned now one thing you remember that this particular buffer is shared between producer and the consumer so here we have to ensure that when uh, the producer is trying to produce the items that means the producer will fill all the items once all the items get filled up in the buffer then producer will not be able to produce further items so but the consumer has not consumed at all so this is what it is indicating this if statement if count is equal to n sleep so it will go into the sleep mode now let us make count equal to 5 so what the producer has done is simply the producer has started placing the items one after the other so it is like let me take some random numbers one item two item three four 
and some numbers like this. So, all these 5 items, 5 slots. Count e, uh, n is indicating what number of slots in the buffer. We have initialized that number to 5. So, we can place 5 items. First, we are trying to check with the producer. Producer will produce 1-1 one, one item and start placing until it fills the buffer. And there is a variable count to keep track of what number of items in the buffer. Definitely, see, once the producer places one item, if only one item is there, if only one item is there, then count becomes 1. After it places the second item, count becomes 2. After it places the third item, count becomes 3. So, keep track of the count which it is producing. We have to make use of the variable called as count. So, with this, we will uh, start here. So, you have to see here, mainly in this code, when does the producer enters into the sleep mode and when does the producer makes a wake up call to the uh, consumer. Similarly, in the consumer code, what is that you have to see? When does the consumer enters into the sleep mode and when does the consumer makes a wake up call to the uh, producer? So, these four different situations are seen here. For that only, you can see there are two if here in the producer code and two if here in the consumer code. Okay. So, in the producer, it allow, allow we are, where we are, we are in this line, the items are filled here, okay, all items are there in the buffer. Suppose, if now assume with this condition, if count is equal to 5, that means all the 5 items are there here. Sleep, the producer will go into the sleep mode when, when all the items are there and the buffer is filled, but the consumer has not taken any item for the buffer from the buffer. The producer has no other work now to do because see the producer if it gets one place empty then it will produce an item in place. But in this case what has happened is in the first if condition if you assume all the items are here consumer has not consumed anything. So, producer will enter into the sleep mode. Only it will wake up once what once the consumer picks the item that also we will see here. So, first thing I wanted to tell you this is where the first if condition will give it to what the sleep mode ok and suppose if the count is not equal to 5 that means if any other lesser than 5 if the count is not equal to 5 it will insert the item. So, this is what I am telling it is keep on inserting the item. Each time it will increase the count by 1 and it will fill all the items in the buffer. So, at this point of time where what is that we have done in the producer code, we have increased 1 by 1. That means, if count was not equal to 5, still there were vacant positions, vacant play memory locations. Then the count was getting incremented by 1 each time and all the items were getting placed one after the other. Once you complete this part, you see if count is equal to 1, wake up consumer. This producer is sending a signal, which one? Wake up. To whom? To producer because and when it will send it will send once if count is equal to 1 that means as soon as it places one particular item in the buffer okay immediately it sends a wake up signal to count why it is sending a wake up signal sorry it sends a wake up signal to the consumer why it is sending the wake up signal to the consumer is before it has placed this particular item you can see here everything is vacant all the file locations are vacant the consumer don't have anything to consume that's why the consumer has gone into sleep mode after it checks that yes the buffer is empty there is no work for me so let me go to sleep so the consumer is sleep now the producer will place one item and if count equal to one the producer will wake up the consumer so it will wake up the consumer and then uh, the consumer will start consuming the item. Meanwhile, the producer will also fill all the items one by one. Okay. Once it places all the items, the count becomes 5 equal to 5. Then the producer will go into the sleep mode. Now, come to the consumer part. In consumer part, once again, you see there are two if conditions. That is, one if is to go into the sleep mode. Another if is what? When to wake up the producer. So, here consumer will check. If count is equal to 0, this is what I said, no? Initially, when the producer has not produced anything, when the con uh, consumer checks that, yes, there is no item in the buffer, then what the consumer will do? It will enter into the sleep mode. This is what is the code here. Hope it is visible to you all. 
yes so students look here if count is equal to equal to equal to zero sleep this is what this is the situation now what is consumer seeing consumer is seeing that there is no item in the buffer so it will go into the sleep mode suppose if there are items in the buffer then it will remove the item item equal to remove item count equal to count minus one so it will start consuming the items so it will start consuming one item that is remove item count becomes minus one count equal to count 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 minus one this way it will start removing all the items so this is what is written here and the job of the consumer is to wake up the producer also when does the consumer wake up the producer when count is equal to n minus one once it consumes one item out of the five immediately it will wake up the uh, producer so let that situation also will see suppose if these were the items the consumer has take uh, consumed one item that time this condition if count equal, equal to equal to n minus 1 n is what here 5 okay 5 minus 1 is how much 4 when this becomes 4 immediately the job of the consumer is to wake up the producer now why it is waking up the producer because the producer earlier has seen that when all the items were filled okay but the producer consumer has not consumed anything so it has gone into the sleep mode that's the reason the producer will uh, consumer will what send the wake up signal to the producer now you can start producing the item because i have taken now one item from the buffer this way this producer and the consumer pseudo code works here so in simpler terms you can just remember in this manner see producer under two situations i will write like this to make it very simple five items are there and what i'll do is if count equal to one once again producer only one item i will write here is it visible so this so these two are for this if condition if count is equal to five this one if count is equal to one this one if count is equal to five producer will go into the sleep mode if count is equal to one it will wake up the consumer and what about consumer part you can see there i can write it like this the two different uh, uh, situations okay file locations for consumer i'll write down what i'll do is same a consumer if count is equal to zero this one if count is equal to zero this part that means this is the situation which one all locations empty if count equal to five minus one four so for that i will write down this situation visible if count is equal to 5 minus 1 that means 4 so hope it is clear to you all students now because for producer these two if conditions i have placed here the scenario and for the consumer these two this was the solution proposed using the sleep and the wake up signal whether this is a valid solution that we need to check or is it leading to some errors now in this manner in this particular situation we have we should not forget that contact switching will also happen at any point of time so in the consumer code suppose if contact switching happens here at this point the consumer has executed this line if count is equal to equal to zero that means consumer is seeing that everything is vacant here there is nothing and that moment only contact switching has happened that means the process is the consumer process is preempted fine then what happens uh, producer these two processes are happening parallelly contact switching has happened at this point when count is equal to equal to zero this one okay but now the producer has started producing the items the producer has produced one item called as 33 so that means soon after it produces one item uh, its job is to wake up the consumer its job is to wake up the consumer this wake up signal is lost now because the process is preempted here consumer is not able to what get this wake up signal from the producer 
what will happen is producer will send only once this because you can see the condition only when count is equal to 1 it will send the wake up signal after that it will keep doing its job it will start entering the next item next it will increment count equal to count plus 1 like this and it will fill all the items in the buffer. Fine. Once it becomes 5, if count is equal to equal to 5, then it will what? It will go into the sleep mode. Now, the producer is in the sleep mode. See, look at this situation. What has happened is, it has made a wake up signal to consumer, but that signal got lost because the process was not at all there in the with the CPU. It was preempted. Then the consumer continues its job. Fine. It will keep on entering all the items. Once the buffer becomes full, what it will do is it will enter it will enter into the sleep mode now once it will enter into the sleep mode once this process resumes okay when it comes back the consumer the job of the consumer is once it comes back it will execute the next line of instruction and the next line of instruction is what sleep this will get executed that means now the consumer is also entering into the sleep mode Whereas the producer has already entered into the sleep mode, the consumer has also now entered into the sleep mode. Now both these processes are under the sleep mode. Then what, what has happened? The system has come to a halt. So this is the disadvantage here with the sleep and wake up signal. So what can be the next solution here? It is not that only the context switching can happen only for the consumer. Look here, the context switching can happen even with the producer. So when the producer sees count equal to equal to 5, if the context switching happens here, and the consumer when it consumes all the items when it sends the wake up signal to the producer that will get lost so the consumer is not able to receive that wake up signal so this way this problem is leading to what it is completely a deadlock situation both the processes are uh, not able to proceed further it comes to an halt so this problem is not a valid solution for the critical section problem and to solve this or whether we can overcome this whatever we are facing here, the wake up signals that are getting lost, whether we can uh, have a mechanism to store this wake up signals that we will be seeing in the next topic. So at present, this is what I wanted to tell you. Sleep and wake up mechanism is used here to solve the critical section problem, but it is leading to deadlock because of this. Hope this session is useful to you all and please uh, like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Bye bye. Take care.